It feels quite odd sitting over here, I must tell you. All right. <laughs> uh, you got about a 40 minute overtake. You got to swing both ways, I guess. Yep. All right, today I'm sitting in the wrong seat. Uh, I'm flying with Matt. He's a CFI to school. He's going to do a little diamond time out here. Uh, we're going to work on some landings, maybe a few stalls or something like that. Um, I will tell you, Matt and I tried to fly before, and we had a little uh, problem with the oil pressure. And uh, he subsequently had, right, had a few Charlie, issues in other planes. Phone at Archer, and so, wait zero clear to land. Still got about two miles. Hopefully today we're good. Fingers crossed. Uh, if not, NTSB will be able to retrieve the cameras and find out what exactly went wrong. <laughs> this seems to work well with my students. Um, the question mark flow check before they call in. We start here, we come around and go over. So, okay. And I know you're a CFI, I don't want to tell you this stuff, but I just... Well, it's in your airplane. So. Right, so one thing we didn't check was these. You can see if these are just barely on, it dims all your panel lights and you think it's out. These were all the way on, so I turned those off. So if we start up here, we got landing lights, we got strobe. We've already set our altimeters. Come down, flaps are to take off, fuel pump on, prop, fullish rich. Right about there. Up, fullish tank. Right. And then trim the takeoff. Right. And that question mark grabs everything. We're ready to go. Up. All right. I don't see anybody on in Star 6 Dallas here. You can proceed on course to the southeast. Remain clear of the Charlotte class. Bravo, you're clear for takeoff 2-0. Okay, clear for takeoff, runway 20. Uh, we're tur uh, we'll stay clear of the Bravo and left turn out. Uh, two to six Delta Sierra. Hey, he's being preemptive. You didn't even call him, did you? Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> All right, clear on approach. Over to shot approach, good day, Archer 438. All right, there we go. Got full power. Full flows high, is that normal? Yeah, you should be okay. For runway 20, report the midfield. Yeah. Sorry, we're ready to fly. Oh, uh, yeah, we're 67. Uh, we'll start hopping. If you get over too much over 60, she'll come on her own. Um, if you see fuel flow high, especially climb or something, I've just been leaning her out a little bit. Okay. Flash the light got my attention. Alright, so I'm going to get the flaps up for 500 feet in the air. Yep. Flaps coming up. Yeah, go ahead and pull the prop back here. Up back to 24. Right about there. Get our turnout. Turnout. I'm climbing a little fast, so I'll let, the, I'll let go of it and see what I get. And then. Whenever you're ready, I like to do an initial lean on the climb, just okay. to start her coming down. So if we go over here, and you start pulling her back to you get like 1450 or so. November 8410 Lima, just proceed west. Okay, right, where am I looking? GT, right down. Right, there, there we go. Along straight in to accommodate some departure. November 246 Delta Mike, there is uh, several airplanes climbing off the airport southeast bound. Uh, the closest one to you is at 2,200 feet just north of the speedway right now at Diamond Star. BS. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right, six Delta here. Traffic's ahead of you about three miles. They're descending inbound to the airport out of uh, 2,500 right now. This is here. All right, we'll uh, we look out for that traffic. Uh, six Delta here. On right, the right, right, off to the right. Yep. Traffic, 12 o'clock. Same uh, altitude, one mile. You would turn back to the right. All right, I got him. And I'll give you another turn here in a minute to clear right, I got him too. So we're we'll good. To right. And we're 20 miles out. Sir. And the range knob, I usually keep the range in tight when I'm taking off and landing because I can see ground obstacles. Yep. Um, and then when flying, you're good. I'm going to you go wherever you need to. We have direct one. Usually go about 12 miles. Because that not only gives you the traffic, but it gives you their altitude in relation to you. Yep. Well, that's 20 miles. All right, to 25 miles, all you see is traffic. In fact, to 20 miles, that's why I picked 12.5. All right, so it's 12.5 radius or half. Yeah. And it's showing you a ring right here of your 12.5 miles. So you're actually seeing more than 12.5. Okay, so the ring is 12. The ring is 12.5. And I find it very handy to have their altitude. Then I need to know if I need to worry about them or not. 
automated weather observation. One, three, two, zero, Zulu, weather, wind, two, two, zero, at eight, visibility, one, zero, clear, below, right, one, two, him. thousand. Temp I'm good. All right. All right, so their runways are uh, the southwest. All right, so you can go to waypoint and they'll give oh. it to you. Six and three, four. That looks like one six is going to be our best runway right. today. What I'll do is I'll actually just cross over midfield. Midfield? Okay. Yeah. I don't see any traffic there, but we'll keep our ears okay. out. Okay. And I will do a direct entry. That's what somebody pops up in the pattern, then I'll mock teardrop. All right. So we're about 10 miles out. I'll give them a call, and it's Anson County. And we're going to land on runway 16. All right, Anson County traffic, Diamond Star 526, Delta Sierra. It's about 10 miles to the uh, northwest, inbound for landing runway 16, Anson. And then, I don't know what your pattern procedure is. I, I can run through mine real quick if you want. Yeah, sure. Um, so I usually just run whatever, 19, 20 inches in the downwind until I hit the 1,000 footers. Then I'll pull the power back about to 10. Hold her level, let her slow down through flap speed, get my first notch in. Um, and then I'll stay pitch for 90. Okay. I'll pitch for 80 in the uh, base and 70, 75 on final. Okay. I usually don't throw final flaps in, landing flaps until final, unless I'm too fast or I got to get down or something, something along those lines. Okay. Um, then at the thousand footers, when you pull your power back, you can go through, you know, fuel pump, full prop, full rich, full as tank. Okay. So about right. a mile out. It's a pretty wide pattern. These are thousand footers. So yeah, see, we're already we're already at base speed. Right. So get my nose down. I'll go ahead and. You said about 10 inches here? Well, that's to get down to 90. So okay. now I want to pitch and power whatever it takes to keep 90. Okay. So I'm going to go 20 degrees. One, right. one notch. One notch. Yeah. 20 degrees. And then fuel pump, full prop, full All right. range. All right. And then pitch it for 90. All right. Whatever your power needs to be to keep it 90. And we got a 33 knot wind coming from that way. So it'll shove us a little bit. Yeah, it's pushing us out here pretty good. Okay, Anson traffic, uh, Diamond Star 6 Delta Sierra, left base 16 Anson. Okay, we're still pretty high, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it all back. Oh, this might be one of the occasions where I would throw the landing flaps in before I turn. Okay. Uh, but I'll leave that to your discretion. Just no, to we're below 91, so... I'll get that drag in there and get her to drop for you. Props full forward, fuel pumps on. Anson County traffic, Diamond Star 6 Delta Sierra, and it's going to be turning final 1-6 Anson, full stop. All right, yeah, you feel her how she just, that sink gets right yeah. in there when you throw those flaps in. That wind trying to hold us out here, too. A little more power, a little slow. There you go. She's buffing it a little bit. Yeah. A little fast. Let's see. Uh, Side low, but not terrible. Yep. Bad for my first time landing this thing in a while. Oh. All right, so there's cruise. Uh, All right. I'll do a little slow flight first. What's uh, if you could coach me through just kind of the power settings here? All right, so basically I would do just like the thousand footers. I'd pull her back to about ten to start with. Okay. Hold her level. I'll even give you an altitude bug. Then just go through your your normal, you know, first notch, second notch of flaps. And probably going to want to be about 65 knots. I coach everybody just above stall horn. It's probably going to okay. be about 65, 67. So we're below 108, flaps take off. Notch. All right, so now we're below 91. So we can go landing flaps, holding that altitude. And, and YouTube, we did do a clearing turn. All right, so there's your horn. About, it's right about 65, which is what I was thinking. And she's behaving at 65. Oh, there's just a scotch. So that's the perfect... For what we have configured right now with the yeah. stall horn, it's perfect. Yep, so there's right, some a, slow flight. On a check ride, that's what they're looking for, right? Just yep. above the stall horn. Yep. We'll do a turn here. 
Back right about 19 inches will hold it too. Just want to get out of that sun before I do anything yeah. else. <laughs> so, and that's an interesting power setting too, because when I teach steep turns, um, usually we slow down to get to our whatever. I usually do it about 100. Uh, the entry, uh -huh. a 19 inches works good. And then when they enter the turn, I have them put it up to about 22, 23, depending on what they're comfortable with. Um, that's my method. I, I find, other than the airspeed and all this manifold pressure, if I just give them that target. Um, but you do have to coach them too, because when they practice by themselves, 21 would probably do it, right? Because you're a little lighter. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, and get us a descent set up for our power off stall. Okay. So approach speed in this airplane is about 70, uh, so 70, we're looking for about 70. So, yep. yep. So there's about 500 feet per minute down. A little more right about there. Perfect. I'm going to close the throttle. Here's the horn. It's going to be a little while before she stalls. Alright, there's, the right, there's the buffet. Sort of braked. There's sort of, it doesn't break though, does it? I would not at All this right. pitch. Alright, so here we we'll go. Just buff it. Unless you get a much higher nose up, she won't break at that. So that when I teach it, I usually have them continually pull back on the stip slowly rather than let it ride. Okay. Um, and then get the buff it and then they will get the break. Okay. Alright, so I'll set up a descent. Alright, let her pick up a little more speed, maybe. Uh, Just uh, enough. Do you just, just... I just keep gradually off. nosing her up. Uh, we're crossing the down one. There's the buffet, and... There's the break. There you the break. go, there you go. Laps take off. Yeah. I mean, you see the break isn't really dramatic in this thing. No, not at all. Go back to four and I'll do a, a power on. Okay. Uh, what power setting do you use for power on? I go full power. Okay, at 24. Yeah. Which is not quite full power. But right, yeah, right, full manifold. Full manifold pressure. That, yep. yeah. I usually slow mine down to about rotation speed. Okay. We'll get down to about 60. Normally I don't get that. <laughs> out of the horn. They're right about there. We'll go full power, keep the pitch coming up, on the right rudder. The ball is the... And that's it, really. A little too much rudder. There we go. Alright, so recover. A little bit of bump it, and maybe that nose will want to drop just a little bit. As long as you keep that tail under the nose, she'll almost do like those aerobatic planes that can sit there like a helicopter. I mean, not quite the same pitch angle. Yeah. Um, if they, if the student does get too aggressive with the pitch, if you're familiar with G1000, you'll start getting those red chevrons coming down. Yeah. And that just means you're approaching the maximum uh, pitch for the thing. Okay. Especially like somebody new in this airplane, it's it's way more touchy than a Cessna. Right. Yeah, I've been told that a lot. Oh, well, you know, my response is, hey, this is a sports car. Cessna's like a station wagon. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to try and pick uh, six deltas here. That's the number uh, 45 to the left downwind. Uh, runway 23, Monroe. Who's that guy? Yeah. He's not showing up on my screen. That's the thing about ADS-B. You don't yeah. always have it, right? Yeah. Yeah, but he's under the Bravo. He's got to have it. Yeah, he's supposed to, yeah. Oh. Uh, unless he doesn't have an electrical system. Oh, that's true. Somebody who, who's a fresher CFI than I am, <laughs> still have all that book knowledge. Yeah, Monroe traffic, Diamond Star 6 Delta Sierra, final 2-3 Monroe. Alright, so we're below, was it 81? Just barely, I'm going to lift the nose a little bit, and then we'll get the pops in. Alright, we're down for one way, 2 3 now. Am I scaring you? Uh, <laughs> it's a habit. If I start feeling the wind go down, I reach for the stick. I was going to say, I'd probably keep her closer to 80 with the way this wind is going. Okay. It's right about there.
Air traffic 2052, left down 123, Monroe. Yeah, there you go, Nag. Nah, nah, walked it right back nice. Once we get down here where it's not so bumpy. We're right about here, Flair. Oh. Not quite. Let's let it come back down. Ah, damn it. You're drifting to the right. I'll do a, um... Well, I'll do it. You should go, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. All right, so there's 60 off the ground now. Now that that first touchdown just had a little too much airspeed still going. Yep. And she'll go right back up. I didn't bleed it off well enough. All right. All right. Do you feel confident? You want me to do another? Oh, I think you're fine. Right. I mean, with these conditions, you're doing fine. And as you get more practice, you know, you'll, you'll grease those touchdowns down.